In this episode, we give you a DJ battle performance checklist. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Scratch Snobs. I'm Akiko Love and this is Mike C. In this episode, we give you our DJ battle performance checklist. And what is that? Basically, we talked about how to best prepare for DJ battles. And right around the corner, we have DMC. And um, a lot of this content is specifically geared towards DMC. Uh, before we get into it, Mike, any thoughts? Yeah, pretty much this is our way of trying to avoid all the things that can go wrong during a battle. Right on. Okay, so we... Uh, um, organize and categorize this in three different sections. Uh, the first section we did this is hardware. Um, the actual turntable, the mixer, or the wiring itself, the needles, all that encompassed. And the second piece is the software, um, the computer programming. And the third uh, category is just insider tips. Uh, we talk about the mental aspect and some spiritual aspect of preparing for battles as well. So let's go right into it with the first category. And this is probably the biggest and most lengthy section. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming out here. Don't worry, we'll have a list of all these things on the bottom of, uh, bottom of the video below. We need clean needles. We're gonna make sure the stylus is cleaned. Um, the contacts are cleaned. We have different solutions to help with that contact. I like using Mother's Mag and aluminum polish with a little bit of Q-tip to help clean the inside of the tone arm and the, the, the what's it, the, what are those? Head shell contact? Head shell contacts as well. And the contacts is here on the end of the head shell that really helps with the connectivity with Serato. I think one kind of obvious thing, but it should be on your checklist is make sure there's no like huge dust bunnies covering up your stylus because that'll mess up the contact with the record. Right. Um, that's always helpful to check out. The dust bunnies, not only there, but also your record itself. Sometimes it gets a lot of that film. <coughs> um, other things to check out is the fader adjustments on all um, faders on the mixers, uh, especially the cross fader and the up faders. Um, yeah, pretty much make sure that the guy before you didn't hamster it or change the like contour curve control in a way that you're not wanting to use. Exactly. Make sure the settings are the way you want it to be. One thing that happens to me at home practicing sometimes is I'll let the needle get too close to the center label on the record. And when you do that, it switches all of a sudden to internal mode in Serato. And all of a sudden, unexpectedly, you find that when you move the record, you're not controlling the sound anymore. A strategy I like to keep in mind is between sets, I like to keep that needle along halfway mark or above. It's a good habit. That's yeah. just a thing I like to keep in mind. Um, another tip you had here is to tape the power switch. And then that would oh, be a yeah. good tip, especially if you don't have that uh, technique in your routine. If any part of your routine has you turning off the power switch, then you know forget about this tip. But none of my routines do. So one thing I'm going to do is just basically tape the power switch down so that I don't accidentally bump the power off um, and you know don't be a dick you don't use duct tape or anything crazy like that just use like painters tape or masking tape so that you don't leave any crap on the turntable <laughs> don't be a dick okay <laughs> uh, another thing to think about is your needle adjustment so uh, each uh, tableist has their own preference so make sure that height is where you need it to be, the counterweight, which it seems like I don't really pay attention to. Mike's always commenting I have things backwards. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, for me and for a lot of other DJs, I mean, we just turn the counterweight backwards and cram it on there to basically put as much weight as we can on the needle. Um, I mean, I know not everyone agrees with that, but the most important thing is when you're at your battle or your performance, make sure it's set up the way you want and you're comfortable with other tips, just kind of like backup items. You always want backup pair of needles. Um, worst case, uh, worst case scenario, you could always ask a competitor if they're nice enough to lend you a pair. That would be nice. Um, I always forget this. I'm really bad at this, but bring in a USB cord. Yeah, that'll be helpful. Um, thank you, Chrissy, for being always so nice and having a backup one for me. Thank you. <laughs> Power cord for your laptop. Yes, that's. A I mean, ideally, <clears throat> you'll have your laptop all charged before you. Show Nature up there, but charged. just bring it anyway. Yeah. Can't hurt. Yeah, I think I have some DJs I've seen where they stopped the routine because they lost power. 
I, I do recall. I do recall that. So. Yes, That's the worst. try to avoid that. Okay, so that pretty much wraps the hardware aspect of it. I'm sorry, I do have one more tip. Um, this is just kind of a, a personal tip of mine, especially for DMC, you can only use rain mixers for the, the North American or US regionals. Uh, so I have rain 62, and what I like to do specifically is put stickers on certain um, parts of my mixers so I could quickly figure out and locate what buttons what because if you take a look at the mixer it is so visually busy and confusing um, especially when I'm working on a high intensity fast moving juggle or routine um, it helps me to have certain visual markers I could quickly identify certain markers again to highlight what buttons I like to use and again don't be a dick don't put anything on there that's gonna permanently stay on the mixer no one wants sticky goo on the mixer so use something that when you're done, it's not going to affect the mixer for the next guy. Yes, be courteous. All right, now we're going to go on to the software piece. It's hardware slash software. We're going to talk about the computer part of it, uh, making sure Serato um, is updated um, and it has all the drivers installed, the, the drivers you need to make sure um, it's operating with the 62 and your computer. Um, certain filters are turned off, you're going to use your sampler, make sure the volume's up on that, um, your, your effects, um, make sure it's all mapped the way you need it to be, or the parameters of your different effects. Um, it's just nice to make sure it, it, it's uh, w the way you need it to be um, at home and at the battle. So just to double check on those things. One little thing I found that might uh, save you some stress is I noticed that there was at least one time where when I showed up with my laptop and I had Serato uh, DJ or Scratch Live turned on already and then I connected it to the mixer, the program didn't recognize the, the hardware, the mixer. So uh, what ended up fixing that was turn off the Serato program, DJ or Scratch Live. Only turn it on after your laptop is mm -hmm. plugged into the mixer. Right. Yeah, basically yeah. plug in your laptop mm -hmm. to the mixer before you power up Serato. Because if Serato DJ or Scratch Live is on before you connect to the mixer, then your, uh, your laptop might not recognize that there's a mixer plugged right. in now. Yeah. That, that's very helpful. Uh, and also in the computer itself, uh, whether you use PC, Mac, or whatever you may be using, and turning off any no notifications is very, very helpful. It stinks when you're midway through a set and you get, oh, someone's messaging you. So <laughs> one, one for me is my internet. It does an automatic search for Wi-Fi. And so I just turn off my Wi-Fi. Oh, OK, gotcha. Um, yeah. And also like my iCal sometimes gives me like, um, uh, what I'm doing for the schedule for the day and so if like I kill that I won't get those alerts coming up okay yeah. so, so disable notifications disable <laughs> notifications exactly okay so that wraps up software so the third part is their insider tips this is based off the years and years of experience that Mike has had um, and experience that I've had yeah this is no other way to I guess to really learn this stuff out and through experience so we're trying to give you guys a shortcut <laughs> um, I think now after um, about five seven years of battling experience what I struggle struggle most is the mental preparation of battling uh, we'll go into other or, uh, details but uh, Mike do you want to talk about this this probably goes without saying but you know, there's no way of getting around it. It's just practice. Just practice until you can't help but do your routine right. Pra practice until your body does the routine, even if your mind kind of drifts for a minute. You know what I mean? So that, like, your hands automatically do what they're supposed to, even if you're shook, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, just practice until you're confident in your stuff. Practice until you're excited to show people what you can do and it'll come out in your performance. We are talking about practice. Uh -huh. um, so with that, you are talking about repetition, motor learning theory, just getting that um, motor memory locked in. And even though if you're having maybe off day, you're able to quickly recover because it's so ingrained with your movements. Um, so with that, yeah, uh, that mental prep too, Take your time when you're up there prepping 
um, for the battle, especially when you're checking uh, all your settings. Um, that's one thing I, I, I hope DMC uh, improves as far as letting, letting the DJ a little bit more time to prepare. I feel sometimes we're a little bit rushed, so I will like just three minutes maybe just to just to breathe and make sure everything's uh, working the way it's supposed to be especially a lot of the DJs spend months perhaps a whole entire year you know on the routine and you know they really want it to perform their routine as best as they can so you know for it to be um, ruined by a technical mishap that's you know that's unfortunate so again just take your time um, take a deep breath if you need to, uh, whatever kind of uh, routine, um, meditation, or just a quick um, um, action to help you refocus and, and realize that you're here at the battle, you're here to wreck, and you're here to have fun. I think those are really important things. Circling back yeah. to practice, a couple of kind of tools that I use, you know, now that everyone has a smartphone for the most part, like... Um, Make sure to time your routine. <laughs> make sure to time your routine to make sure you're not going over the two minutes or the six minutes or whatever. Uh, maybe make your routine five minutes, fifty seconds, just to allow some space where you know if you fuck up, then you can reset and not go over the time limit. Um, also, yeah, when you're practicing, sometimes film yourself. It's e so easy to do with an iPhone. Just Tape yourself and see if everything looks to an out outsider the way you want it to look because you can't see yourself when you're performing. So, uh, yeah, take a second to see what it looks like to a spectator. And in addition to that, those are all great tips. Um, if you have other DJ buddies or peers, uh, perform or reach out for a study group, um, people who really have a good eye and give you the feedback you're looking for, um, That those are really great just kind of practice to do uh, to get ready for battles. Yeah, and, and there's nothing like performing in front of someone else. So even if you don't want to show everyone your stuff before the battle, just just practice performing in front of somebody because there's a huge difference between just doing your stuff when you're by yourself and someone watching. So even if it's just like a friend who doesn't even know any, anything about DJing or even if you just put it on like Instagram Live or Facebook Live, I mean, that's kind of performing in front of people in a way too. So all of which to say, just be ready to perform in front of people and practice doing so. Um, you know, also this is all kind of connected. <clears throat> the mental preparation is kind of what you talked about, and like the muscle memory. One of the things I'm really trying to work on is <clears throat> just the type of table list or DJ I am. I'm very slow to warm, so it takes me quite a while to warm up. Um, and that's something I really try and improve on. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of that's just to be a mental challenge and mental prep that, boom, just to be ready and to go and not to be rigid and, and, and stiff, you know, to let things fluid and come natural and let me relax. And I, I think that's one th thing I really want to keep in mind is keeping calm. And uh, one avenue is in particular, I really want to focus on, focus on coming this season is my breathing, making sure my breathing's composed and steady and I'm not getting too excited throughout my set. So those are the things I'm looking to work on this coming battle season. Sounds good. Okay, um, just a couple other things I realized, I'm looking at my checklist, this could have possibly got back to, to uh, hardware, but when you are sound checking, make sure the booth monitor is at the level you want, you know, not too soft and not too loud where it's just blazing your ears and hurting you. That was a mistake I made last year at the LADMC. I had my monitor a little too loud and it shook me. So that was my mistake. <clears throat> um, and also just other tips to help you with your overall performance um, with the battles. Uh, practicing in front of the mirror I think is a great tip. In particular, uh, throughout your set, um, you want to really think about crowd engagement. So there's a big difference when you see a battle DJ who's really focused only on the equipment and never making any type of engagement, looking up at the crowd or showing any type of acknowledgement to the crowd. So there's a big difference with that. So practicing with the mirror, looking up and seeing how you look in certain um, parts of your routine, um, making sure you are looking up and your body language, 
th what you want to communicate to the crowd is very, very important. Yeah, I think <coughs> that's also solved by if you record yourself practicing, that way you can see how you look. Like if you look too stiff or, uh, you know, I never used to watch myself practice. So uh, if I did, I would have known not to kind of overdo the stage presence. But uh, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what it looked like. I was just practicing in my room. Um, but yeah, watch yourself. Uh, the very last tip in this section is, uh, you know, when you're up there, this is personally, this is what I like to keep in mind is to have fun, first and foremost. And you're out of battle, so to wreck it and to embrace either yourself or whoever that killer mentality. So for me, when I go battle, I like to embrace my personal killer craze so I like to have that mentality going in um, but do whoever d you know fits you best wrap yourself and have fun and kill it yeah I like to kind of imagine I mean a lot of athletes say this too like just imagine yourself killing it you know imagine everything going perfectly imagine you giving the best version of yourself and uh, that's a big step towards actually doing it and so we're gonna end with a basketball note so kind of two things like Phil Jackson talks a lot about that visualization right and uh, am I actually go there yeah I'm gonna give kudos right uh, coach Wooden one possibly the greatest uh -huh. coaches of all time what is his favorite uh, or um, one of his favorite I know he has a lot of quotes but one of his famous quotes is uh, failing wait failing to prepare is prepare you fail to prepare you prepare to fail right take that to heart so anyway, that's our list of things to help you prepare for your battles, and hopefully they help you avoid some of the pitfalls that we've experienced in past battles ourselves. That's right. I hope you guys enjoyed Scratch Snobs, DJ Battle Performance Checklist. I hope it helps you guys out, like you said. We'll see you guys at DMC. All right, please subscribe, 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 spread the love, and we will see you guys next time. Peace and love. Thanks for watching.